Here's, we're gonna try to tie the, before we do our wrap up here, I wanna actually wrap the two biases together. Remember before the break, we talked about cognitive biases, right? Well, how does cognitive bias interact with implicit bias? This is how clever our brain is to not have to work too hard. If I have met a person and my brain quickly in that four tenths of a second reached a conclusion about them that they're not, let's just say I came, it was a, it was a story, I met somebody who was a female, younger, did not have a technical background, and she was applying for what I, what I think is a technical job, and my brain is saying, mm, mm, mm. Guess what the brain then does to keep itself safe? We deploy confirmation bias. Even though it was implicit bias that made the story, now what does my other, my cognitive brain start to do? See if you can figure this out. What do I start to do? I start to look for data points to support my original conclusion. Anything that doesn't, guess what I do with it? This goes right over my head. And so the brain not only makes snap decisions about people, but it then looks for evidence to support what decisions or conclusions that we made. I'm gonna tell you right now, tackling this and unwinding this does not happen overnight. But the first step is what we're doing today, which is hopefully increasing our awareness. So once triggered, our brains perpetuate existing biases by looking for data that supports it. And here's the worst part. We even release dopamine every time we find evidence. The brain says, you nailed that one, Paul, great job. And I find another piece of data, great job again. So we actually reward ourselves for being biased. If that's not a tough trap to get out of, I don't know what is, all right? Thank you.